with all the business news. Yeah, a doozy today, I tell you what. Yeah, Nuala, thanks. Good to see you, by the way. Okay. We're going to start with, you know, this trade war that's raging between the world's two largest economies, the US and China, of course, and relations were already tense. They're very tense. But Washington initiated, we know that, that tariff war in an attempt to protect US uh, companies' intellectual property. Well, I tell you what, tensions may now deteriorate even further after a Bloomberg report that data from US companies has been stolen via tiny chips planted by spies in Chinese tech products. Yeah, Bloomberg Businessweek cites more than a dozen sources that spies had embedded this malicious chips inside equipment used not only by American companies, but multiple US government agencies. We know in Hong Kong trading, the computer maker Lenovo led the slide, closing down some 15%, while the equipment maker ZTE dropped uh, some 11%. The report has been denied by Apple and Amazon, both uh, cited as companies that have been subject uh, to these attacks. Stephanie here is an independent tech expert and joins us and a familiar face. Steph, good to see you. So, Hi. you've got this little board and in it they put this little chip, almost invisible to the eye, mm. sold to American companies and government, American government institutions. As soon as it's implanted in their framework, apparently, they have access to it. I mean, this is, a, this is a heck of a story. Is it credible because we're only hearing it from one source at the moment, Bloomberg? I think it is credible. Bloomberg is an excellent news outlet. It will have been fact-checked and lawyered within an inst inst of its life, this report. It's taken mm. a year for them to do that investigation. And as you say, they cite both insiders at Apple and Amazon, but also within the U.S. intelligence community. Right. So, mm. But it's interesting. Why, are, why haven't we heard from the intelligence community? Why haven't yeah, we heard from the FBI or others? Or why is Amazon and Apple coming out and denying the whole thing? They haven't done... Well, it's not them that's planted, so uh, I, I'm confused about that. Well, this is an ongoing investigation that's been going on for three years, and it's mm. still happening. So I think that could ex actually explain quite a lot yeah. of what you've just said. And it's entirely possible we could be in a world where this Bloomberg report is accurate, and Apple and Amazon are both genuinely saying this isn't what happened, because we don't yet know. It may be what they think has happened at this time. Perhaps to the best of their knowledge, they've done their own internal investigations, and so far, they stand by their side and Bloomberg stands by its. And what's going to happen is over the course of this investigation, we will hopefully get some resolution. So the question is, how do we do that, mm. right? So we know um, the company that's the supplier of these servers, um, Supermicro, it's a mm. US company, supplies lots of these motherboards uh, which are being baked into all of these different servers around the world, right? Not it's just an American the United company, States. but it outsources to China exactly. for these motherboards, right? Exactly, so the, the motherboard is literally like a, it's almost yep. like a cookie tray yep. size piece of kit and there's going to be all sorts of chips, some of which are really easy to see and one such as the one that's in question is really, really tiny, mm. right? Like the size of a sort of end of a sharpened pencil, yeah. probably a good way of thinking, or a grain of rice. You cannot inspect every single motherboard and every single server that is produced in the world. That's not possible. So the question really is, are people now going to be tearing apart yeah. all of their motherboards that are produced by Supermicro to test it? So we could start actually getting some forensic investigations that are happening even outside of this official investigation that's being conducted by the US government. But the implications, if this is true, the implications are enormous. Yes. For, like US national security, Amazon is, is cited, it, it has its cloud services used by the CIA. Yep. Um, so does it get to a point where, if this is true, every company or anybody through the US government goes, if you want to deal with us, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing in your machines is going to come from China. I think what's almost more interesting is it's almost irrelevant now if it's true or not, it's that it's possible. Right. This story has illustrated the vulnerability within Silicon Valley's supply chain. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so by getting all of the, the US manufacturing base, which the United States lost over the course of the 1980s and 90s, is now been outsourced to China. So the Made in China brand is now under question. So if you are a US company hoping to contract the US government, mm -hmm. you might not be allowed to do that if. China's anywhere in your supply chain. Now that would require perhaps regulation from the US Congress. Mm. We need to see that. And one note of caution on that is we had a little bit of a preview of this movie back in January when you and I talked about Intel yep. discovering sort of vulnerabilities in its hardware. Now that had nothing to do with China, we think, but nothing happened with that. And that was a vulnerability that was in smartphones and PCs all over the world, yep. right? So yep. people are now having to look at the vulnerability of hardware, whereas previously we've been looking at software. And second, they have to look at supply chains because supply chains are all about maximizing profits. So you want to be making things in China because it's cheaper than in the United States. But in doing so, if you've just risked 
your entire company's security or the US technology intellectual property domain, maybe that's a price not worth paying anymore. So we'll really have to see where this goes. Yeah, we will. Um, Steph, I could talk for another 10, 15 minutes on this story because it's, I think it's a, it's a warp up, but uh, no doubt we'll talk again about it. I know you're going to keep across it for us. Steph, Thanks. always good to see you. Stephanie here joining us there. Hey, the number of people filing for unemployment benefits in the United States fell last week. It fell to its lowest level in almost 49 years. Good news, great news, of course, for President Trump. And we're going to get the latest jobs numbers, yeah, job creation in the next few hours when, of course, the US, uh, US releases those numbers. That's for the month of September. Samira Sain has this one from New York. Economists don't believe that the pace of hiring will change all that much. On average, the U.S. economy has been adding about 196,000 jobs per month for the last several months. So key will really be wage growth. Hourly wages went up in the last jobs report, and that's a really good thing. So if Friday's report shows that wages have increased again, it will be a real sign that there is momentum in the economy and that it wasn't just a one-off blip. The other thing that is going to be key is the labor participation. Now, although the unemployment rate remains low, people who had previously stopped looking for work haven't really gotten back into the game. So economists will want to see a real meaningful change in the number of people that are actively looking for work. Okay, I'm going to bring you those numbers on my show in about an hour and 45 minutes. In the meantime, follow me on Twitter, please. You can get me at BBC Aaron. I'll see you soon. Nils, all back to you. Thanks very much, You're Aaron. Welcome. Now stay with us on BBC World News. Still to come. She's been called the world's last great diva. We'll be speaking to the legendary opera singer, Angela Gordieu.